Okay, which one? I need that one. And I'm going to need that one. And I'm going to need that one. These would came back here sooner than I thought. Okay, a few cars to move about as you might have seen. Um, and these ones, as I just said, came back earlier than I thought. Right. That's gonna move the cars, put this one inside, get it ready to work on. And as you can see, we have a few issues. Oops, that should do more or less. Somewhere here should be okay. Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. Right, uh, this is a 2000 and let me check. 6 2006 Audi A3 uh, 1.9 TDI and um, if you do follow the channel you most likely have seen the video for this if you don't follow it um, I will leave a link in the description below to that video now at the time and as I've explained I was only has to look at the problem the car came with at that time um, and now uh, two weeks later maybe three now, two weeks later, I, I guess, uh, I was asked, or the missus was asked to ask me if I could have a look at this now. So, I don't, I can't remember now if you covered um, something, um, even scanning uh, these issues, but that's my lights. So, we have ABS, ESP, steering, and fuel, <laughs> like always. Right. Um, so uh, let's kind of scan the car and try to figure out what's wrong and see if we can get this sorted okay so let's gonna go to our brakes trouble codes okay so we have two issues by the looks of it However, uh, they are here from before, obviously. So, right rear wheel speed sensor mechanical malfunction, implausible signal, and then we have active, which is the one that is causing the issue right now. Uh, left front wheel speed sensor electrical error in circuit. So, left front speed sensor. It's gonna go back. Live data. Oh, shut up. advanced let's see if it, it does that yes it does so let's just gonna go bank 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 show only those and front left so front left is gonna be my first sensor so let me pull the seat forward a little bit okay it's gonna go in reverse. I don't have much space here, but let's gonna see what we can do. Okay, so we have seen, let me go a little bit more. Let me go forward now. So you're gonna see that they all move, except the first one, I already seen it. There we go, you seen that? Except the top one. So with no further ado guys, let's go and turn the car a little bit. So I give more space on that side. Okay, so I can work over there. So I think that's it. Sweet. So, um, let's kind of go to the basics. Let's kind of take that wheel out and have a look at the sensor. See what we have in there. Okay, so wheel is out. Not really sure what's been done here, but looks like this plate has been painted. The cables have been painted. The brake wear sensor. Well, 
is not connected for sure uh, and my ABS sensor uh, well gonna have to inspect this see what's going on the cable looks okay other than this one here cut but we'll have to investigate this and try to figure out what's wrong right to start with someone has been fighting against this plague that's for sure right okay let's kind of pull it out and uh, see what's going on okay so on a quick inspection can you see the same as I can see hold on a second let me get my torch if it works there we go right can you see the same as I can see I hope it's visible on camera, bloody phone. There we go. Can you see it? The pins are bent. The pins are completely bent to start with. And when you look on this plaque, I can actually see the marks of where the pins are actually going. There on the edge. So I don't know if these pins are actually connecting properly. So let's kind of straight those pins and go from there. Okay, pins are now straightened. Don't know how well it comes on the camera. The black steam looks okay still. You can see the marks in there around right the edges, so where it goes in, where the pins have been scraping. You see? So I can't really fix this plug, but we can make it look a little bit better, I guess. Even if I cut these bits off. Then we'll plug it back in. The, the, the tab in there is still good, still holds the plug in place. It's just this sort of protective plastic on the top. So let's kind of try to plug this and see what happens. Okay, so let's kind of test. Unfortunately, the screws that hold the disc they are snapped. So someone snapped this. There's nothing I can do, guys, right now. So it's gonna have to stay like this. But I put this um, socket here. So everything is plugged in, as you can see. Okay, uh, it holds in place, as I said. The the tab underneath is still okay. With just that sort of cover, that uh, helps you to hide to unclip it. So let's kind of see. Let's kind of look at the top sensor. At the top reading. Look at that. Sweet. Can you see that? And we have a fix by the looks of it. Okay, so uh, as you have seen, um, it looks like it was just the bent pins on that sensor. Whoever has been working there, it, it was really it was not really doing a good job. Um, so yes, at, at this point, I would just like to mention that is attention to detail is key. Uh, yes, I could have just rush through and just go yeah it needs a new sensor get a new sensor without doing any testing etc etc um, just put a new sensor and you would work and you say hey I fixed it but hey it could have been fixed without any parts now yes if the pins were straight um, the next thing I would do I wouldn't go for a sensor straight away um, I would put it back in if that would still not working I would be measuring the wire from the sensor all the way back to the module that would be my next step but as you've seen we got uh, we got speed signal in there so we're just gonna go back now and we're gonna go back and we're gonna go trouble codes most likely it's gonna be sporadic are we still cuz I haven't hold on yes okay so let's gonna go back <laughs> sorry about that guys it's gonna go back let me cycle the ignition. I just want to see that fault before I clear it. I just want to see that fault to go to passive or whatever. See if it goes. There we go, you see? So the fault is not active anymore. So let's clear these codes. No fault codes detected. Let's gonna go back. 
Okay, so now it's gonna start the engine. Oh. Okay. So ABS light is gone. Now I have my ESP light. Now one go, one gone, two to go. So let's see my ESP light. It's gonna go back to my ABS. <coughs> So obviously now on my ABS, there's no trouble codes on my uh, ABS module. As you can see, I don't know if there is a separate module for the ESP on this. I strongly believe this is going to be on my... Okay, let's kind of go to start with, let's kind of go to steering assistance. See if that has anything to do with that. Yeah, yellow steering in there. Steering angle sensor. No uh, diagnostic interface for data bus, no signal or communicate passive. So active, we have a steering angle sensor, which is a, an active. Let's gonna clear this. Most likely we'll come back straight away. There we go. So that one comes back, it doesn't go anywhere. Although I didn't turn off the key, but uh, let's gonna go back. So, we have an issue with our steering angle. Yeah, get rid of that. Okay, let's go to my steering assistance then, because it looks like it's going to be my only issue now. I scores in my ESP and my steering light thing so uh that's gonna go to some live data okay advanced measure i don't know yet how we're gonna do this if i'm gonna split that video here okay so we have steering torque rotor speed yeah he's detecting he's detecting this Where is my ah, steering angle sensor? Zero degrees. So it tells me the speed, it tells me everything, but it doesn't tell me the position. So everything else, so angle speed is working and status position. I think it's just a matter of. Uh, maybe just a matter of um, initialize. It says there steering angle not initialized so we'll have to initialize the steering angle and then we'll go from there by the looks of it okay so i'm under adaptations and hopefully this it will do the job i'm not sure if i need to go outside if i do if it's gonna ask me to drive the car yeah then continue is not okay, pass through the video, but it's disconnected, steering angle sensor loses, it's okay. Next steering angle is checked, for is relevant, measured, blocked, is red, okay. Is not okay, yes. Unplug the diagnostic connector, start the engine, the steering angle, drive a short distance at 15 to 20 km per hour in a straight line. If the innocent driver is successful, the fault lamps power steering and the system will go out. Okay, I think I need to go outside. Uh, so let's gonna do this right. Just hold a second with me, guys. Okay, and after being here trying a couple times and the procedure was failing every single time, uh, do you remember seeing that implausible signal or something like that for the rear right sensor? So right now I have on graphical data I have um, a rear well the top is at the top is front sensors front wheels that on the graphical data is the rear ones and we do have the um, uh, blue line is the left the green line is the right the one that is faulting um, and I'm gonna drive just for a short distance 
five meters or so and I want you to look at both readings and look at the green line see what the green line uh, actually uh, does and you see that so the blue line is the good sensor look at the green line why it does I'm gonna go back now look at that signal that signal is no good so it's triggering faults uh, for that sensor and obviously is not allowing me to uh, carry on with the calibration of the sensor by the looks of it so I'm gonna have to look at that let's gonna take that wheel inspect um, <laughs> I hope it doesn't need the bearing because the reluctor on this is the ones on the bearing by the looks of it so I really hope we don't need a bearing because that's going to be a much more expensive repair then. So, but let's gonna take the wheel out, inspect. It might be that just dirty, we don't know. Let's gonna have a look at it. Okay, so let me show you uh, what happened on the sensor at the back and why the signal was all messed up. Uh, so, let me turn around like this. As soon as I took the bolt from the sensor, everything looked too easy to come out. Oh shit. Okay, so. Come on, are you gonna focus or what? Oh crap. It's not gonna focus, isn't it? But, can you see that in there? Can you see that green in there? Look, that's one contact, which I just broke it off as I was trying to pull it out. And that was the second contact. Can you see that? And the plug. Oh dear. Oh. The plug is right here, so when I pulled it out, obviously one one side just snapped, but the other side was already like that. So that was the reason for it. That were that that was why that signal was all messed up. So now that bit is inside, and I'm gonna try to take it out somehow. Uh, maybe drill it somehow, I don't know yet. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to remove, that's for sure. Okay, and in the meantime, my phone ran out of battery, so I decided while the phone would charge a little bit, I would get the sensors. So they had two sensors where I got this one, oops, where I got this one from. They had the aftermarket and they had this Bosch one. I got the Bosch and um, I decided that was time for me to get one. Uh, I decided to get one of these kits to uh, wind back the calipers. Um, usually, uh, this this one is one of those that I believe you need to turn. But I don't believe. I'm pretty much sure you need to turn and push back at the same time. Um, I usually use a combination of a. Um, of a um, extensible pliers and some screwdrivers and then I usually push them back that way but I just thought for 29.99 I would get one of these kits and make my life a little bit easier so uh, the sensor is actually there now that I've removed the disc so I can now smash it up drill it whatever I need to do and um, as, as I said the reluctor is actually the magnetic reluctor is actually part of the bearing as you can see in there, so that's where he measures right there, so we're going to give it a good clean, obviously uh, I'm not going to really take you through this, so I'm just going to smash that drill it or push it out, whatever and uh, clean everything and put the new sensor in so once that's done we're going to go back to our live data and see our readings I'm going to skip all this part now because it's just it's not rocket science, this um, so that's it really so I think I'll meet you back inside the car with everything in place. Okay, and I think it's gonna worth to mention this because someone, or someone, whoever would put the sensor before, I don't know if that's the way you should do, but if you put just the sensor normally, the sensor comes too further this way and it pushes against the reluctor ring, which is why the other sensor is like this. See, it's been rubbing against there. So, because of that, the reluctor ring here is a little bit damaged so I don't know if this is gonna work um, I don't know if it's gonna come on camera can you see in there probably can't 
Uh, probably you can't, but it, it is a little bit damaged because it's been rubbing against, look, they've been there. So it's been rubbing against the other sensor. And uh, they've been there as well. And it damaged the reluctor ring. So if this doesn't work, um, I'll have to get a new bearing. Um, unfortunately, for today, I'm not going to have the time. So we're going to put all these back together and see if it works. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, well, at least I know the reluctor ring um, It's going to have to be replaced. But yeah, so I might, it might be that worth the mention. Uh, you need um, a washer behind this sensor. And what happened when they put this sensor is they put the sensor and because they were forcing this too much against that, he actually cracked these here and that's what starts to allow because obviously you'd have to force these this way in order for the sensor to come all the way this way when you put the screw and uh, and obviously it forced these and this cracked and well so now we have a small gap between the sensor and the reluctor ring don't know if you can see in there I think you can so there is a small gap it's not touching it looks like it is but it's not so there is a small gap in there I still have readings, so ju I've just checked on the on the scanner, so I just thought it worth to mention this. Okay, okay, so let's just look at the live data now, uh, just see how it looks. So same setup as earlier, the two sensors, I just want to see how the two lines look now. Oh, look at that, much better, much better, don't you think? A little bit of a spikes in there, but overall I think... The ECU will not trigger fault for that, I hope. At least I hope. So, now let's gonna try. So even with that damaged reluctor ring, it seems to be good enough, I guess. So, let's gonna now see if we can, obviously, get all this sorted now. And look at that, only one yellow light, which can be resolved at the nearest petrol station. Right, so the codes for this, uh, it was, I know these codes, they were not here at the beginning. Uh, that was me while I was trying to do the, um, the adaptations, etc, etc, with the rear wheel sensor uh, still faulty, which I was not aware, only when I went back, as I explained. So the, um, the ESP light, as soon as I logged out from the ABS unit, the ESP light went off straight away, uh, and then I was left with that one. Uh, this one is quite simple. You start the engine, you hold the steering straight for about five seconds or so. Then you turn all the way to the left, to the limit, and you hold the limit in there for about 10 seconds. Then you turn all the way to the right, hold in there for about another 10 seconds. Then you bring it back, center it, okay? Turn the ignition off, turn the car off, leave it off for a couple seconds. Turn the ignition back on without starting the engine for about 10 seconds, start the engine, job done. So that, as it says, active it. Oh, come on, bloody glare. So that code now, we're gonna go back, limit stop, so that's when I've just explained you. So if I go, damn it. <clears throat> no faults detected, so I didn't even have to erase the codes. So that's about it, really. So, loads of flights, everything resolved. So, just recap, front sensor, nothing wrong with it. Just some idiot that plug to plug wrong and bent the pins. Attention to detail on that one, uh, very important. Um, rear, as you've seen, someone put a sensor in there. Didn't realize the sensor cannot go all the way in smash the sensor against the reluctor ring, crack the sensor at the same time, most likely, and it caused all the damage. I'm really surprised that the reluctor ring is still working, but we'll see for how long. But for now, it's working. So important in there is just look at the, the gap between the reluctor ring and the sensor. In this case, I had to put a washer in there. It was about maybe a mil thick, um, and problem solved. So as you can see now, car is driving is fault free I haven't drove the car I just went to the end of the road right up to the end of the road and came back and uh, it's driving okay so now let's gonna wrap up this video right so hope there's some information in this video that you can find useful that can help you whatever hope you enjoyed the video 
If you do still have any questions, any comments, please, please put them below. And like always, thank you for watching.